Hi guys, I'm Carlos from Carlos Ceramics and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to throw plates on the wheel. So without any further ado, let's head over to the wheel and get started. <laughs> I take a bowl of clay and I attach this to the bed with some water. And then I start centering it. I first press the clay towards the middle as far as I can get it. And then I completely center the clay by coning it up and pressing it down. I repeat this multiple times until the clay is fully centered. And as you can see, I'm throwing on a plaster bed. The great thing about plaster beds is that the piece actually comes off itself while drying. And especially with plates, it can be hard to cut off the plate from the bed when you want to trim it. So that's why I would recommend to throw on a plaster bed. That way you don't have to cut it off and you can just trim it when it comes off the bed itself. Then when the clay is centered, I start pressing the clay downwards. Since we're making a plate, it's going to be quite wide. And I press it downwards by making a fist of my right hand and I press it onto the clay in the middle and then I press towards the side, as you can see. And I hold my left hand on the side of the clay to make sure it stays centered. And just like this, I slowly flatten the clay more and more and make it wider. Because I'm making a set of plates for me and my family, I wanted the different plates to be the same size, so that's why I sometimes measure the clay to see how big and wide I'm making it. But if you're not making a set, you of course don't have to measure anything. And then I start pressing clay towards the side. This can be a little bit hard because the plate is so wide and if you've never done this it can be a little bit of a struggle. I would recommend to hold a sponge in your hands because the clay can get dry quite fast when making plates like this. And the sponge prevents the clay from sticking to your hands. And just like this I go over it a few times and I move my hands from the middle to the side to press a bit of clay towards the side. So as you can see the clay at the side becomes thicker and the bottom itself, the plate itself, becomes thinner. And I'm pressing quite some clay to the side because I'm making the rim quite high because we want to use these plates for pasta. But if you want to make the plate a bit flatter and don't want to make the rim too high, you of course don't have to press too much clay to the side. And then to make sure that the bottom is completely flat and smoothened out, I like to use a flat wooden loamer. And I also move this from the middle to the side to make sure it's just completely flat. And I make sure that there are no lines and that it's just nice and even. And then I start working on the rim. I first press the clay of the rim a little bit upwards. I like to do this on the left side of the wheel. This is just my own preference. You can also do it on the right side. So I just press it upwards a little bit and then I start pulling up the walls as you can see here. This just works the same as with basically any piece that you make on the potter's wheel. So I hold the sponge in my right hand and I press towards my left hand on the inside while making an upwards movement. And I move my hands quite slow. Especially with wider forms like this, it's more difficult to keep the clay centered. And there's also a bigger chance of the piece collapsing. So I would recommend to let your wheel spin a little bit slower when doing this, especially if you're making a plate for the first time. If you're making a plate for the first time, I would also recommend to make the rim a bit lower, because that's just easier, but you can just try whatever you'd like, of course. Then I measure it again to make sure it has the size that I want, so that I can make it into a set, like I said before. And then I take a sponge and I go over the whole piece to get rid of any water or slip, because if you leave this on the piece, it will dry slower and uneven and it might crack. So I just get rid of this by going over it with a sponge. And then I take a wooden knife and I cut away a little bit of extra clay at the bottom. And then the throwing part is done and the piece is ready to dry before it is leather hard and can be trimmed. And like I said in the beginning, I just let them dry on the bed and I just wait till they come off themselves. With this plate it took two days to dry but this also just depends on the temperature of your studio and all of that. <laughs> And then after it has dried, I put the plate upside down on top of my given grip so that I can trim it. As you can see, I have the little hands of the given grip turned around so that they are as low as possible, if you know what I mean. And then I start trimming it. So I take a trimming tool and I first start with getting rid of some excess clay here at the sides. I always have quite some clay here, but I don't really mind trimming this away, so I just do that like this. And just like that I go over it a few times and I make one smooth even form. And I like to make the plates a little bit round but you can of course just make them in any shape you'd like. And then I also get rid of a little bit of clay from the bottom. Because the plate just came off the bed it is already quite flat so I don't have to trim away too much clay to make it centered. But as you can see the side is a little bit wobbly so I cut away a little bit more until that was nice and flat again. And then I decided to trim away a little bit more clay from the side here and make it even rounder. And I just trim as far down as I can. This can be a little bit of a struggle, especially when you're making lower plates. And when trimming the sides, I also like to measure the wideness of the bottom so that I make this the same with every piece of the set. But again, if you're not making a set, this doesn't really matter. 
and then I start trimming away some clay from the bottom. I like to make a foot ring, so I first make a little line so that I know how wide I want the foot to be. And then I go over the bottom a few times to cut away some clay, so I just again move from the middle to the side. This way the plate will also be a bit lighter when it's finished and it's just nice when you're holding it. And then when the bottom is nice and flat I like to use this smaller trimming tool to make the line here a bit sharper but it's just my own preference so if you just want to keep it more round you can also just only use the bigger trimming tool just whatever you'd like. And then the trimming part is finished as well and what I like to do to smooth it out is go over it with a wet sponge. And then I go over it again with this trimming tool. This trimming tool isn't really sharp, but it helps me to get rid of the slip that was created by the sponge. This might sound a bit weird, but it works for me and it really does make it smooth. And then I go over it another time just with my finger to smooth it out even more. And then we're completely done with the trimming. As you can see, the bottom is nice and smooth. And then it's ready to dry before it can go into the kiln for the first biscuit fire. And then when the piece has been fired, I start glazing it. I decided to glaze the plates with the bubble glaze technique. This is a technique where I mix water under glaze and soap. And then and I blow bubbles like this. I'm not going to explain how to do this exactly in this video because otherwise this video would become way too long but I did make a video explaining this technique in full detail so I will link that video down below in the description but here you can just quickly see how I bubbled it. And then after the bubble glaze has dried, I just leave this to dry for a few minutes. Then I apply a clear glaze. I apply two coats of the glaze zinc free clear glaze from Emco. This clear glaze works always for me and I just apply it with a big brush. And I apply this on the inside and on the outside. And I'm not glazing the bottom otherwise it will get stuck to the kiln shelf. Because the glaze will melt in the kiln. And then after applying two coats the glazing is done. I always get a little bit of glaze on the bottom when brushing it on and I easily get rid of this by twisting the piece on top of this wet piece of fabric. I just hold it and twist it like this and as you can see the glaze just comes off and the bottom is nice and clean. And then the piece is finished and ready to go into the kiln for a glaze fire. And here are some pictures of the final result. That was it for this video, thank you very much for watching, I hope you liked it and learned something new from it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And if you're going to make this page yourself and you're going to post them on Instagram, please tag me at Carlos because I would love to see it. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!